What's happening, guys? Welcome back to another Power Project video. We're back with the OnlyFans. Yeah, with myself, Cap, and my myself and Captain. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a a bit of a, a few things to discuss this week. Yes, few heartbreaking things to discuss this week. Yeah, yeah. we are late. We uh, do apologize for that. Yes. We had some technical difficulties along the way. Mm. So, uh, what do you want to start with, Captain? Do you want to start with the first heartbreak or the second one? Oof, oof, oof. All right, uh, but let's get into it. Uh... In the middle, but support arriving now, and it's scored. It's Skamaka. Uh, yeah, uh, I like think we start with. Mm, okay, so who has had the rougher week? I feel like it's you. <laughs> so we should start with you, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's all, again, it all started last week. Mm. From last week's Europa League game to this week's Europa League game. Yeah, we got knocked out of the Europa League by Atalanta. Gasparini has done it again over us, but this time he has gone through to the next stage. Liverpool 3. I, no, <laughs> I don't see Liverpool 1. Sorry, I'm, I, the hope is still in my head. <laughs> Did you watch? I'm sure you watched last night's game. Yes, yes, I uh, did. Right, and uh, to be honest, it like felt as if so. You were it 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 it, 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 uh, it, it like just felt like when Salah scored, right? It was like, oh, okay, they might go in and I could do it, you know. But after the goal, right? Like, like. It is like nothing went in, right? Like, uh, right? Uh, like, it is. It, it, it's basically like where Salah should have scored, he like he failed to uh, score, right? So you, so you, so you had lots of chance, lots of chances, and I'm thinking back to, to like the one where uh, I'm not sure who put in this ball, but Salah was running towards the goalkeeper. The goal, like the goalkeeper had stepped out. And you know, Salah could have just, you know, chipped it, then it there would have been a goal. Like, yeah, he he so bad, he didn't even pay attention to the ball. You know, he, he didn't catch it cleanly, shimmed it over, and I'm like, no. Yeah. This is not the I, game. Yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it so it, uh, it basically felt like, okay, this is not like this is not uh, this is not Liverpool's game to win, right? So yeah. that's how it basically felt. Yeah, again, it wasn't our game to me. <laughs> uh, but I can't, I can't say much about it. We were just poor. Mm. It's been a recurring thing. And, you yeah. know, we, I think recently we've had a... Because of how good we've been in the past six, seven seasons, our recency bias has created uh, a toxicity in our fan base. So as soon as something bad happens, they want to blame every single player. Like mm. how the fan base is. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. okay. Because the whole season, people were glazing Sobozla. Now they're saying he's not fit for the club. He should leave. Why we went and wasted our money on him? The same thing they're saying for Endo. They're saying he's been meh. It's been decent. But for a period of time, there were like three months, we were just That's glazing him. So glazing. The thing is, why do you want to go and like put the players on such a high pedestal for a small amount of time? And then when they do have bad games, like, bring them down. Just yeah. get get it. Yeah. Obviously, if you keep seeing, if the players keep seeing that, no one's gonna be motivated. Or... But then again, and plus also they they're not experienced players; they're all young. <laughs> they're yeah. all our age. <laughs> well, but can you really say say like that? Because because I'm because I'm looking at the. Oh, okay. Rather, let me look at the lineup that uh, started. Uh, so like so the so three nil are like at home, right? Mm -hmm. Because like I right because like right because Liverpool don't lose at home, right? Liverpool don't lose at home, and so and and like you know, uh, so I I didn't watch that game, right? But when I saw it, I was like, what the hell? What is going on here? Right. What do you think 
happened with uh, so uh, within that three 0 defeat against uh, uh like against uh, okay, like, uh like at home, right? So like, what do you think really happened? I can tell you, we were drunk on the fact that we couldn't beat United. It's wow. the fact that we didn't beat United is uh, that uh, got into a, you know into that mindset that all of us thinking, oh no, it's done now. Because mm. we dropped points, and if we beat United, we would have been what, five points clear. If mm. we carried over on that same momentum, I don't think we would have lost the game against Atalanta. But because we drew with United, and United mm. like a a team where it affects our mentality. As soon as we drop points against them, we feel like no, we lost everything. And it's not that. It's it happened before the season that we did beat them home and away. I think we won the league, or we drew and we won. No, I think we beat them home and away. We won the league, and almost every game that we beat them, or that we play against them, in which we win both ties, we don't end up dropping points afterwards. But the games that I do remember that we do lose to them or we'll drop points against them. It, for some reason, it just gets to all players' heads, and it's, yeah, we just slowly go down, drop a mm. couple points. Because two seasons ago, we lost two one to them. Then mm. we lost, I think, to Fulham. Then Everton. Then we we were just losing. <laughs> Things were rough, but uh, eventually. <laughs> uh, what I mean, eventually, I mean like after a long while, then we picked up and then get going. But now. Because it was towards the end of the season and important games are here, it uh, made the players sort of tired mentally mm. and physically. And then I think that's why players like Sobozla and stuff have been having a rough time. Mm. And it's not 100% uh, the, the, you know, the game's blame. Players also, they should be stepping up in moments like this. You should be looking at themselves and saying, you know what? Uh, <laughs> Our manager is leaving. Let's try and do something. But then again, you can't blame them for not being able to put a shift when they are physically tired and coming back from injury. So I think there's like a series of things. But I don't want to go and put the blame game on circumstances. So. Uh, but let's hope that Liverpool do not find their form again. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope that they like do not find their form again. So that teams can take advantage. Well, looking at the other Europa League results, uh, Roma beat Milan 2 1. You know, I like think that that was a big shock considering where, Roma... where Milan are in the league and how successful they've been with the players they have. I'm yeah. also surprised. Yeah, I'm also really surprised. But I have to give. Uh, credit to Roma's manager, uh, it's Francisco Totti. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Brother, Totti, yeah. one of the best players for me to watch in the uh, Italian shirt because I, de- I haven't watched much, but uh, when I did, it was like you know, him shake, mm. uh, El Sharawi, mm. Totti, bro. Oh. Oh, yeah. So that uh, team, that Roma team, I'm like, not sure, I think it was. FIFA 14, FIFA 15, like uh, like that Roma team back then. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the other result was Marseille beat Benfica uh, on uh, penalties. Uh, not much to say about this. Except... Marseille winning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because I was watching the game and then my brother and I were watching the game. And then it got late, so we went to like he went to bed and then I was just. Oh, okay, okay. But I was watching, I was watching something else, but yeah. So, for Marseille to pull a comeback like that, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, I think, uh, yeah, then in our last game, West Ham drew 1-1 against Leverkusen, but Leverkusen win oh. like a tie 3-1, and mm-hmm. their unbeaten streak does continue. So. I genuinely thought they were going to lose the game, even though they were going to go through, I'm thinking, if they won't get the invincible treble now, will they? Because if they can get their treble, oh, that, oh, it's that, up. Oh, that is crazy. If they can get an invincible treble, oh. oh, that is crazy. And then yeah. they're still, and they're still going. That's the thing. Hmm. Mm. And but we have to see what uh, what have uh, what have we are going to talk about them, you know, later on, right? But that is the Europa League. 
And then at the semi-finals are set Marseille versus Atalanta and Roma versus Liverpool. What's your predictions on that? I think I have... I think I have Marseille going through to West Ham. I was going to say Marseille against Liverpool sitting in the final. That's my... Ah, yeah, same, same, same. Yeah, because then I, I think Liverpool would have win the whole thing like so like so there's nothing stopping them yeah there's nothing stopping the biggest them. threat was us because of our yeah our status yeah, yeah. and then the second the biggest the other biggest threat was also milan it was us and milan and both of us got knocked out now not, yeah so <laughs> yeah not to say but, that the clubs don't pose the threat i'm just saying in terms of uh in terms of stature and like, yeah. in terms of yeah Cool, cool, cool. Then let's move on towards the UEFA Champions League. Ich bin zu Zabitzer. Wieder Centrale Goal. Goal. Yeah, this is where I had my heart break. Yeah, this is where I had my heart break. Yeah, but which match do you want to start with first? I like think we start with the boring match, which would be surprisingly Man City versus Real Madrid. Yes, yeah, let's go there. I did not watch the match, but from what I've heard and from what I've seen from the highlights, City controlled the game in mm. terms of having shots, possession. They had everything. They still lost. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I am, I am, I am, I am looking at it now. City had 33 shots. 33 shots against Real Madrid, but they only had nine on target. target. And it literally had 68% of possession. And Man City had 922 passes. You know how crazy is almost a thousand passes in one bro, game. So, and so, 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 compared to Real Madrid, 400, 477. I mean, 457. Like Man City. Came out there and 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 so they literally played their game, right? And then so Real Madrid, they kind of just parked the bus. They kind of just waited. You so there wasn't really any, uh, there wasn't really any what the word, uh, sense of okay, we just want to go and play our own style. No, so they literally. Just sit back, absorb the pressure, just waited and I like, waited. And like, this kind of reminds me of the Man City Arsenal game that we had a few weeks ago. Where so where so where like Arsenal didn't really play their own style, but they kind of just know just play to nullify Man uh, like Man City style. And I I feel like this is what Real Madrid did here. Yeah? But it but like it turns out that it works. For Real Madrid, as so as they went on to win on penalties four to three, right? So like so like so like so like compared to like the first game, that uh three three draw like uh, so like uh, like this was a major letdown to be honest. I like and like. And also to look at it the way Guardiola set out his team, and then you know people start to think now. Not to say again, not to say from the from the last week, not to say Haaland is a bad player, but he didn't turn up again. Mm, mm, mm. And now to you think I always I now I've been saying Haaland is gonna come and change the Premier League and he did in his first season. Now mm. the more he plays, the more I realize can Haaland actually do it without any support players? Mm. So you so like basically saying that like unless he has the ball straight straight to his feet that he can't affect the game right so like you are saying that like he's like he's so what you call it like his overall play is kind of lacking when so when you compare to you know Kane you know, Kane like likes to you know drop back ping a pass there then the ground back into like and in like to the box but like because I like, feel like like so like the older strikers right so they like so, like they didn't really have to you know come um, uh, like, come back 
you know, since like since like the like entire team was basically based around, you know, just get it into the box, get it to your striker, then you finish it up. Right. So we're like, so whereas these modern day teams, you know, lots of teams are now sharing the ball around, you know. Lots of teams are now sharing the balls around. So it's kind of hard to I mean not hard, but it's kind of like what's the word? Like it's kind of telling that Ireland has like not developed this this uh this overall play. Like so like considering he's like, been given, he's been handed goals and because of that he hasn't been you know working with it. Yeah. I I wouldn't say uh not working, but rather, you know, like against the like uh, like against the really good teams, you know, against the really good defenses, like really struggled there. Yeah. So yeah, so I kind of get what you mean by that. Because even against us, he did score, but he scored in both games because of defensive errors. Mm. If he didn't make those defensive errors, he would have wouldn't have gone through on goal. Mm. Against Arsenal, he got pocketed twice. Did he score in the one game? Mm. I like I like think throughout the three games that we've played, he has he has he hasn't scored. It's crazy. That's crazy. I can't think of a team that he scored against apart from like United. Yeah, United. Yeah, I think you scored. You scored against Chelsea. Huh? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But I right. But I like I like think that that I I, I wouldn't call him a a small team merchant because that's not what he is. Yeah, he isn't. He, yeah. he does he does turn up to games at times. Yeah, but I mean he does have like what thirty goals this season. Yeah, All yeah. So, so yeah, so like the fact that we're even saying that oh a, like a thirty goal striker is kind of poor. It kind it it is crazy in, like in itself because yeah, I think it, yeah I so I think I like think he's a victim of his own. High success which he had last season, yeah. Mm. I mean, a lot of players recently have been there. Like for for example, Salah. A lot of players saying, a lot of people and fans I know they saying get rid of him. He's washed. He's not as good as he was. Any... Yeah, he still but... had twenty plus goals. Salah's not man. Yeah. And people forget that now we are pl- the way we are playing. We're trying to accommodate for the fact that we have strikers now and yeah. we don't have like a Firmino. Yeah, we're like, trying to accommodate for Dao Nunez, we're trying to, accommodate, trying to accommodate for Gakpo, we're trying to accommodate for Jota. So it's not like, you know, we're telling Salah, uh, don't go and be the player you were before. Mm. We're just telling him, don't be on the ball too much. But then, yeah. Yeah. these fans... <laughs> but there's nothing you can do there. Oh, yeah. Mm. Then we move on to our next match, which is Barca versus PSG. PSG. Barca versus PSG. PSG got their revenge. They did Barca's La Remontada against them this time. Yeah. But... The best, the winner of all of this was Dembele. <laughs> Brother, yeah. he, ate, he ate that win in. He, was, he got his revenge for. Himself against all of his Barca fans. Did he win him or stuff like that? Yeah, I, so I like. Uh, wait, so you watched this game live, right? I didn't watch. I was in between the games. Okay, okay. Okay, I watched this game live, right? And then, uh, to be honest, right? Uh, PSG pretty much controlled the entire game. I like when you say the entire, entire game, but you know, like. Like. Uh, 60, 70 minutes PSG were the one in charge, but then Barcelona got their goal, right? They was like, oh, yeah, PSG are going out, like, yeah, so like, yeah, so it is over, right? Yeah, so, so that's, so that's what I, that's what I felt was going on, right? Then that red card pretty much changed the entire game, like, 
Araujo. That was, that was a very dumb challenge. No matter yes. how you hit it. Can if you lost and don't risk it, you're winning already. Don't go and risk losing a player. Like literally, like literally, and you can't even say, "Oh, that is a soft." Uh, what one? No, I like the only reason. The only reason he got the red, I like the red cover because he was stopping a a goal scoring opportunity okay. as the last man, right? So that's why he got the red card. Then our after that, the you know, PSG just just went to work on Barca. You no, know, Dembele scored. Uh, for like Vitinha scored in the second half. Uh, like Mbappe scored the penalty. Then he like scored that. Uh, then uh, like that gift of the goal. Then like that fell to him. You no, know, I they felt like the most impressive player that I watched was uh, Barco, right? The superior. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the superior young winger that they bought from Lyon, right? So the way I watched him play, like I, like I can't say who he plays like, but I, I will say that oh yeah, this uh, like this the guy is a real deal. That if like Mbappe leaves, right? So 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 they literally have another guy right uh, right there, you know, just waiting for them. So I, like, I don't think they'll feel the effects of that uh, much. I mean, uh, I don't think they'll feel the effects of him living too much. Yeah. But that's what I thought. And it is true, because uh, the only problem is that even though PSG didn't make it through this time, I feel it's still a very incomplete team. I still think... No matter who they buy, no matter what they buy, the fact that they keep on buying stars, mm. it's going to be a problem for them. So, especially now with Mbappe leaving, we know he's leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take them a while to build up to what they could almost achieve. You can't say what they've achieved because they haven't achieved anything apart yeah, from being yeah. one. Yeah. So, what they almost achieved. Mm. So, in that retrospect, I think. I think you know, Barcola is a very good uh, addition to the team. He's young, he's not a star, he's not like what they did with Messi and Neymar. They just went and bought superstars oh. and expected them to change their... Yeah, really, they like, all job together. So now they, they're buying players. Uh, they even have other players in, in the mm. team, like uh, Ugart and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Gonzalo Ram- uh, Ramos. Mm, Gonzalo Ramos is a very good striker. And, and if they can yeah. use that and slowly build the team, I think... Yeah. We can see a different PSG going forward rather than the messy name Mbappe trio that did nothing. So you know, so you know, like, so you know, like, uh, so you know, like, in a Kiferi, that, uh, that uh, team should have worked. That team should have won everything because they even bought Ramos straight from Madrid. Yes, but I had Donnarumma, they that's... had Kinos, they had they uh, had them everyone. And they, they had like superstars everywhere, but I like I think it's just egos. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't want to get into it now, but it's kind of like how United is. They don't have a team, they just have players. players. They have yeah. egos. Hmm. Same with the how we used to be in 2015 when we had Balotelli. Oh. <laughs> and same yeah. with Chelsea now. We yeah, so, so also have just players. Uh, they, they, you, so you wouldn't say they have egos, right? But they have players, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Right, but let's move on to probably the craziest game of the night. Dortmund 4... Atletico Madrid 2. Uh, and Atletico Madrid came to the game with a 2-1 lead, right? And but still they somehow lost, which was crazy. Like it was really crazy. It was it, mad. Bro, so it was a mad game. So what happened? Why okay? Uh, what happened in this game was that Dortmund scored first, then they scored again. So I think it was like three. It was similar. 
Ja, ja, so, ja, so was two nil. They was three two on aggregate. So was like, do, uh, they were like Domin were winning, right? But yes. then uh the Kletic Madrid got an own goal. Then they scored again. Then it was a little to come Madrid. They were now winning four uh like four three, right? Then like Dom Dortmund scored in the like, seventy first minute. Then they scored again in like seventy fourth minute. Then it became five four. Bro. So this was a crazy man. It was a crazy man. You see the goals they scored. You see the goals Sabitzer scored. Oof. Oof. What a strike. What a goal. And the thing is, it's like, they don't have a team on paper to go and say, well, the they don't have a team on paper, you can say, to beat the other like, team. Like, yeah, the like, like, yeah, but like a room and three and stuff like that. Yeah, but... Like to to think that they would test an Atletico, and you know how Simeone plays. He plays mm. like six in the back, and he plays it's he plays one of the most annoying types of football. Uh, like exactly, like and exactly. they broke it so well. Like Fulcher played, he played. You, I don't, I don't want to say. I would say like he played like he was very comfortable in his position in in at Dortmund. Like as if they don't miss Haaland at all. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Fulcrug has just been playing enough. They have Adiemi, they have... Marlon has been here and there, but Adiemi played decent. They have... They yeah, have... They have play play. So like that. Franz, is, Franz is performing really well, so... so like, they have some... Like, so like, so like, the one thing I can say about this Dortmund team is that they have lots of good young forward players, right? That if they start to develop nicely, that they can really lead this team to to like to something <laughs> big, right? Alright, but I I think they have to go and build their 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 back line. Uh, I mean, like I like don't know, right? Because almost like, easy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then the one thing I want that I wanted to say was that. Uh, like I am so glad that like they got rid of the like away goals rule. Like I am so glad that they got rid of the away goals rule because if, right, uh, right, uh, right, uh, uh, like right, because I, I like feel like it's now like every goal. I mean, feel like, like so what? So like what's the word? It, 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 it like feels like every game is now a do or die series. Situation, situation. Because if you go and watch, I mean, that Real Madrid Man City game, the Man City scored three goals. They so they literally would have gone home, just parked the bus, and then and then they would have won, right? But like they have to go again, uh, so they have to go again. So I'm uh, glad that they really got rid of this away goals rule, right? Yeah. I you can say I I'm, I'm up and down with it because I do I did appreciate the way goal rule it really made football interesting like when yeah. it was played against Ajax and you scored yeah, yeah. all in literally the last second of the game the clock hit like the clock hit six minutes it was six minutes at a time and the clock hit six minutes and they scored on the time to win. Oh, it did make it more exciting. Now, without the away goals rule, the fact that we have away goals rule, team can just easily park the bus like one Madrid. Yeah. Mm. So, in that sense, it's you can say it does like it, but I can't complain with it. Mm. Mm. Okay, cool. Then, to our last match, and uh, probably my heartbreak or my second heartbreak of the week. Oh. Bayern nil, Arsenal. I mean, Bayern won, Arsenal nil. Bayern win three two on aggregate. This uh, this game, to be honest, this uh, this uh, this game was closer. I wouldn't say close in terms of shots. Like so, Bayern created the better chances. No, Bayern looked like a team ready to uh, score more. It, it, it like like it just felt that that Arsenal 
in in like fact like Arsenal could have gone here to to and like here, here to the Bayern, right? But Arsenal just were missing one piece, like like uh, like uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like like that's what it like feels like that like us and uh, like us um so like that like Arsenal are just missing one piece. If they could just get that one piece, yeah. Yeah, you know, in my opinion, the one piece is it's a striker. Yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. I feel, I feel you need a striker. But to be You're, honest, I feel like you need a not just any striker. I think you feel like a, a goal-scoring striker, like <laughs> yeah, like a proper goal-scoring striker. Mm, 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 mm. And but so right uh, throughout the game, right? Uh, so I like. So this is a game. It like it just felt like. So I like, watched the word like. In in like in like it just felt like oh. That okay, so we are gonna win. So and, like I I I felt like the ten minutes. It off like when they scored because I so like because I uh, like because I like knew that we weren't going to score and yes. it was about, 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 like, yeah but there's nothing much to say about this game you know a uh, Bayern win which uh, which is what they can uh, uh, like, to what they like deserve you know they were the I would say they were the better team on this game. And then we were the better team back at home. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, but uh right, uh right, uh right. But if uh like, but if there's one thing to say about this game that I'm glad that we didn't go and lose five one. Oh my bro. Like if we lost five one again, oh my god, bro, I like would have just jumped off a bridge, man. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't lie though. Uh, the, with the way the thing plays, um, Bayern, they didn't play particularly. Wow. They played well for how they've been playing this season, but for how Bayern play in the Champions League, they didn't play well. They just, they, but they, re- I think they, they realized, you know what, we aren't playing well. We just came from losing the league. I think we need to like shape up, yeah. like get together. Hold down the fort and then score on the opportunity we can. Mm. And they did exactly that. So they mm. managed. They did their game management was very good. Mm. Yeah. So what are your predictions? Our first semi-final is Bayern versus. But the, uh, I think Bayern were good enough to beat you guys from well management, well player management. But I don't think they're good enough to beat Madrid. So. Mm. I think Madrid are going to the final, and I think we're going. To, I think we're going to see Dortmund in the final. I think Dortmund can overcome PSG. Yeah. So you know, uh, we uh, didn't uh, was well, like well, well, like well, not last season that no didn't Dort- Dortmund play PSG this season already? Yeah, they were in the same. They were in the same the group. Yeah, uh, which is weird. Right, right, but I, right, okay, but I think, uh, Real Madrid are gonna go uh, the, the through. PSG is gonna go through. Then Real Madrid is gonna win. That's what I think. Mm, I don't want. I really don't want Madrid to win. So I'm gonna. I just want. I just want anyone else to win. <laughs> Madrid also. I just hate Madrid. I just hate Madrid with a passion. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. a burning fiery passion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But that was the Europa League and like the UCL. Yeah. So yeah, cool. 